Okay, I'm sorry. So this is gonna be a really short video because I just have to finish China. But I'm at my parents' house and my mom's dog, Jack, he has some breathing issues. And so Jack started doing his like weird breathing thing. I don't know if you could hear it on here or not, but I was like, oh crap, I gotta go. So he's fine now. He's just chilling. That being said, <clears throat> this, there's not a lot left to do but you know our dogs are our kids so okay so i was like right in the middle of talking about the grand canal yeah okay so you saw this picture already which is like a historical picture of the grand canal and if you remember the grand canal <clears throat> connects the huanghe and the yangtze rivers the Huanghe up here, it's what you called the yellow in ninth grade, and the Yangtze here, and it connects them somewhere like in here, somewhere in this plane, okay? Makes it like awesome for trade and travel and stuff. I like this picture right here. Oops, not that picture. I like this picture right here of the Grand Canal because first of all, it's modern, but also you can see how big this sucker is. Y'all, the Grand Canal was not built with bulldozers or tractors or dynamite blowing stuff up, okay? It's my dog now, little Freya. So anyway, like knowing that, that people did this with shovels in their own hands is pretty impressive. Okay. Now we're going to take a little bit of a detour from where we were. See, it's so awkward where I had to leave, but... <laughs> Speaking of trade, <clears throat> I already mentioned the Silk Road, okay? But look. Oh, dang, it's a little picture. That's okay. You can still get the idea. <clears throat> what you're looking at here is Dar al Islam, the Middle East, and then here's North Africa right here. Okay, so the Middle East. This is all Dar al Islam too, this whole thing here. And then this right here is China. No, it's not. This right here is India, okay? Right along here, you see these mountains right here? The Himalaya, which means over here you have Tibet, and then you have China, okay? So again, I already mentioned this, but the Silk Road is not one road. It's a network of roads, okay? And if you take the Southern Silk Road, you're taking a network, a whole bunch of different trade routes, that come down here south of the Himalaya, south into India. And they come up this way. If you take the northern, you're coming north of the Himalaya, like this. And then if you take the far northern, you come up into Mongolia here, up into Russian territory today. There's no Russians here at this time though. And then you hit the Russians over here, and the Germans, and you go into Europe this way, okay? So we have massive Silk Road trade. And all of these inventions that I mentioned in the last video, gunpowder, movable type. Here we have the Caravel or the Latin sail, compass, porcelain, silk, and other things. Of course, tea was a big one. Um, all of this stuff is being traded from China to Europe. Not so many things that are needed are coming from Europe to China. China is technologically ahead of Europe. So China doesn't really need anything from Europe. They like things. There's cool things, you know, interesting things, but nothing that they need. Well, Europe, on the other hand, needs some of the goods from China. They don't know how to make gunpowder. They need it. All right. So... Europe is really like behind at this point. Most of the merchants went in caravans like you see here. And yes, camels were a big thing, especially through the Taklamakan Desert. The Taklamakan Desert is like over here somewhere. Okay. Now, this picture right here shows you the Silk Roads a lot better. Um, you can see like there is not a Silk Road. <clears throat> there are these Silk Roads. 
even down here in this picture, it says major trade route, parentheses, Silk Road, minor trade route, parentheses, Silk Road. Because, I mean, look at this. That's not one road. It's a whole bunch of roads. But you can see trade. And y'all, they're not only trading goods. They're not only trading gunpowder and silk. We also have things like Hinduism coming in to Cambodia down here. We also have Buddhism coming in to China. Christianity. Buddhism coming into here. Okay. Um, disease. I don't know if I have a map of that. I do. Disease coming in. Um, this right here, you're looking at bubonic plague, the Black Death, which I'm going to talk about more dealing with Europe because it affected Europe so terribly. I mean, of course, it affected here too. But um, the Black Death, the Black Plague, the bubonic plague, whatever you've heard it called, um, it killed roughly a third of Europe's population in like 10 years. That is nothing, nothing compared to coronavirus. Coronavirus is bad, yeah. But a third of the population dead in like 10 years? It's crazy. That being said, we know that it followed trade routes. We know that. We can look at where cases were were reported from historical peoples and we can see trade routes, trade routes, absolutely, absolutely. You see down here, 1340s, yeah? Look over here, 1350, what? Look here, 1320, so look here. Before 1320. So we have, boom. 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 We can see it and we know it's because of trade routes, okay? Um, so just understand, on trade routes, you're not just trading goods. You're trading um, ideas. You're trading disease, you're trading religion, you're trading um, educational stuff, you're trading people. And I don't just mean like slavery, which was nothing new at this time. Slavery has been around from the beginning of time. Do not make the mistake of thinking that slavery is a modern thing. Nope. Um, but people, but it, it's not just slavery people. Marco Polo, I'll talk more about him in the next video, but Marco Polo started out over here. In Venice and ends up over here and then ends up back. Why? Trade routes. So trade routes are a pretty big deal, okay? Not just for spreading things, but for what's the word? Um keeping up with the world around you back then. I mean, they didn't have 24-hour news. They didn't have a phone that they just picked up and Googled and look at, look at whatever the newest thing is. Trade routes kind of kept them up on what's going on in the world. I already talked about it. Here's a spread of Christianity and Buddhism map. And I'm going to deal more with Christianity when we get to Europe. So just chill on that. But you can kind of see, um, you know, right? Buddhism isn't Chinese originally. Siddhartha Gautama, the founder, he is Indian. Yeah, that's what this is showing you. And again, it's spread on trade routes. Absolutely trade routes. This right here, when you are going through trade, when you are going through a desert area, that's a bit of a problem right? Look at this desert. This is right outside of a city called, do you see it right here? Kashgar. Kashgar is part of the desert in China, okay? But look at that.
Look at this picture again. Look at this picture again. It's the same place. That's Kashgar. One of these pictures is taken where you can see the city, but look at the background. I know it's hard to see. Do you see off in the distance? Guys, in the distance, you eventually run into that. Um, the only way that trade can happen in places like this, and we'll talk about this big time with um, the Sahara Desert trade in Africa, is to have what's called an oasis town. An oasis town where literally these towns popped up because of trade. Originally, like they were originally just places where people would just sit and like relax overnight or whatever. And they would have like, like a little oasis, just a little place for, for them to stay. But of course, over time, these cities got bigger and bigger and eventually became big deal trade centers. Um, Kashgar, I don't know if I have it on a map. Here it is again. You can see the background. This is the more like, I don't know, far away. You can tell like it's skyscrapers and stuff. This is showing you more of like the poorer areas here. And you can see the background really well. It's not as hazy in the distance. But this right here is the exact same thing as this. Okay, I don't know. I wanted to see if I had Kashgar on the map, like if it's written there, because I can show you kind of where it is. Oh my gosh, I should have just X'd out. It's up here. I just don't know if it's on. Yeah, it's not on here, but it's it's in this area, somewhere in this area. Teklemekin, isn't that a great word for a desert? The Teklemekin Desert, Teklemekin. It's just fun. So anyway, you have all these oasis towns where people can travel in a caravan to Kashgar and spend some time, sometimes like a week or so. And they would also start trading in these towns and then they'll travel, 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 travel to the next town. And then travel, 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 travel. And that helps them get across the desert. Again, the same thing is going to be done in um, the Sahara Desert as well. Okay, that I do believe takes us to the end of the song. Right? Yeah, it does. See, Kashgar. And again, the best word ever Taklamakan. Taklamakan Desert. Okay, so. The Song Dynasty does start to lose power over time. It's pretty normal. Again, I told you in the last video, every civilization rises and falls. So does every dynasty. Every dynasty rises and falls. Well, <clears throat> over time, this one starts to fall. And right when they're weak, they get nailed and conquered by the Mongolians. The Mongolians are right... They're right here. Okay. This right here is Mongolian land to begin with. Eventually, this whole thing is going to be Mongolian. Like literally all the way to Europe. All of this. Even down into here. All of it. As well as China. Okay. But right now, the Mongolians are right here. And that will be dealt with in the next video. Okay, I'm going to go.